إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد so the next sentence uh, he said wa kullu man siwa allah alam everything besides allah is created and i am one of those creations this is really the tafsir of rabbil alamin that's why uh, we, we have number 1 that he's the lord that he created everything and that's why he is worthy of worship so al alamin is plural of alam like we said and uh, that's everything in the world. Alam al-ins, alam al-jinn, alam al-tayr, alam al-nabat, plants are alam, the jinn are alam, the, the, the waters are alam. And then he said, he brings it close to him, he says, and I am one of that universe, and I'm part of that universe. Al-alamin is plural of alam, and it's all creation, all of alam. And it's said to be derivative from the world, word alama, sign. Because the sky, the earth, the alam of the sky, the alam of the earth, the alam of the plants, the alam of the oceans, everything we see are signs. They're the signs of the creator that he nourishes and sustains and takes care of and created all that. So the author said, وَكُلُّ مَنْ سِوَ اللَّهِ عَالَمْ وَأَنَا وَاحِدٌ مِنْ ذَلِكَ الْعَالَمْ Everything besides Allah is a created being. And I am one of the created beings. Me who's speaking, who's reading to you. I am part of that universe. I'm nurtured and I'm raised and I'm created by Allah. So he's basically bringing the point home when he says, and I am part of that creation. فَإِذَا قِيلَ لَكَ بِمَا عَرَفْتَ رَبَّكْ Then he moves on to the next sentence. فَإِذَا قِيلَ لَكَ بِمَا عَرَفْتَ رَبَّكْ So if it's said to you, how now? We gotta know, we establish the fact you know your Lord. How did you arrive at this knowledge that He's your Lord? You need knowledge, which is the ma'rif of the rububiyyah, and now you need to know how you found that. How did I get the answer? That's a follow-up question to the original question. Here, bima arafta rabbak, the ba in bima, is ba is sababiya, the ba of why, why, ba is sababiya, bima the ba is sababiya. It's a matter of ghayb, it's a matter of unseen. So how do we know this if it's a matter of, of uh, unseen? How did we find that, out this knowledge? Because Allah describes us as the believers in the unseen. Then answer, The answer is, Then say through his signs and through things which he has created. Through his signs and through things which he has created. One way we know our Lord is by the covenants. He took from us covenants, and there's three of them. The first covenant with Allah, the first covenant, when Allah brought forth from the children of Adam, from their loins, the seed of covenant, which, and He made them testify upon themselves. Allah said, am I not your Lord? They said, yes. وَإِذْ أَخَذَ رَبُّكَ مِنْ بَنِي آدَمَ مِنْ ظُهُورِهِمْ ذُرِّيَّتَهُمْ وَأَشْهَدَهُمْ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ أَلَسْتُ بِرَبِّكُمْ That's the first covenant. That's the first covenant. وَإِذْ أَخَذَ رَبُّكَ مِنْ بَنِي آدَمَ مِنْ ظُهُورِهِمْ ذُرِّيَّتَهُمْ وَأَشْهَدَهُمْ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ The second covenant is the covenant of the fitra. ميثاق الفطرة. This is another covenant which also affirms the first covenant by Allah that he created us on the fitra. فَأَقِمْ وَجْهَكَ لِلدِّينِ حَنِيفَةً فِطْرَةَ اللَّهِ الَّتِي فَطَرَ النَّاسَ عَلَيْهَا لَا تَبْدِيلَ لِخَلْقِ اللَّهِ The covenant of fitra, O Muhammad, فَأَقِمْ وَجْهَكَ لِلدِّينِ Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Set your face towards the religion, Hanif. فَأَقِمْ وَجْهَكَ لِلدِّينِ حَنِيفَةً Which is meaning worshiping Allah purely. فطرة الله التي فطر الناس عليها لا تبديل لخلق الله. That's the fitra which Allah created mankind on. That's the second covenant. The fitra 
which Allah created mankind on. And you know the hadith of Abu Hurairah, the hadith sahih, كُلُّ مَوْلُودُ يُولَدُ عَلَى الْفِطْرَةِ Every newborn is born on fitrah. This is the second covenant. At the end of the hadith, he says the parents change them into Judaism, Christianity, and so on and so forth. But he doesn't say in the hadith that they change them to Islam. He didn't say Yusrimani, Yuhawidani, Yunasirani. He said Yuhawidani, Yunasirani. He didn't say Yusrimani. Why? Because he was born Muslim. You don't change him. That's what he was born on. The pure fitra is one knows his tawheed. Is that enough? Is two, are those two covenants enough? It's not enough. There's a third covenant. That's the covenant when Allah sent the messengers affirming the previous covenants. رُسُلًا مُبَشِّرِينَ وَمُنْذِرِينَ لِأَلَّا يَكُونَ لِلنَّاسِ عَلَى اللَّهِ حُجَّةٌ بَعْدَ الرُّسُلِ So the fitra is tawheed. If one is left alone, he would be on tawheed. Allah said in the hadith al-Qudsi, خَلَقْتُ عِبَادِي حُنَفَاءَ فَجَاءَتْتُمُ الشَّيَاطِيرِ فَاجْتَالَتْتُمْ عَنْ دِينِي من حديث صحيح مسلم عياض بن حمار رضي الله عنه said Allah said that's a hadith Qudsi I created all my slaves and the Hanifiyya and the Tawheed and the Shayateen changed them those are the three covenants which we must know and these are the covenants which we Allah told us the answer to من ربك those are three covenants you should know about. The, فَإِذَا قِيلَ لَكَ مَنْ رَبُّكْ فَإِذَا قِيلَ لَكَ بِمَا عَرَفْتَ رَبَّكْ فَقُلْ بِآيَاتِ وَمَخْلُقَاتِ Through his signs and through things which he has created. Those covenants are proof that we know Allah. That it's the fitra. That when he created us, he says, أَلَسْتُ بِرَبِّكُمْ And we said, yes, it's a covenant he took upon us. Uh, intellect proof is also additional proof in addition to that. Every creation needs a creator. Do all these crea creations, alameen that we mentioned about, exist by themselves or by chance? If you say they exist by themselves, that's rationally impossible. It was first non-existent. So how can it exist when it was non-existent? The non-existent is nothing until it exists. It's not able to bring itself into existence. That's common sense. If you also say they exist by chance, then we say this is also impossible. Do cars, do planes, do rockets, do computers, uh, do other forms of machinery, do they exist by chance? The atheists or deniers of Allah who don't know man rabbuk, would definitely reply to you, tell you, there are no cars and rockets and planes and computers. They don't come by chance. That's impossible. They all tell you that it's impossible. So we say to them, then how do the birds, the mountains, the sun, and the moon, and the stars, and the trees, and the coal, and the seas, and, and everything that's in between the uh, heavens and the earth, does that, how can that exist by chance? You remember the story of Abu Hanifa and the atheist? The one when he debated over the existence of Allah and they couldn't believe that a ship made itself. So the author says, فَقُلْ بِآيَاتِ وَمَخْلُقَاتِ He is stating that the creation of Allah, بِآيَاتِ وَمَخْلُقَاتِ That's to prove the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To prove this, whole universe, this whole universe doesn't come by coincidence but by a creator. Now, when you say that, بِآيَاتِ وَمَخْلُقَاتِ Look at the universe, how it was created and who created it. Is that text or intellect? That's, you, that's intellect overall. The author mentioned آيَاتِ وَمَخْلُقَاتِ The signs, the night, the day, the sun, the moon. Uh, and then he followed it by two verses. He used intellect, but he followed it by two verses. Combining between intellect and the text of the Qur'an. He's going to mention two ayat to prove this. Some may understand when we say intellect that uh, it's only the mind. But rather mental proof or intellect when we say it, it's restrained and governed by the guidance and under the umbrella of the text. Look what I mean. When I, when I say, وَالنَّهَارُ وَالشَّمْسُ وَالْقَبَرُ لَا تَسْجُدُوا لِلشَّمْسِ وَلَا لِلْقَمَرُ 
that night, the day, in, in the, all the creation. That's, that's intellect. Look at the creation, we say. That's intellect. The Quran we says, look at the creation. That's intellect. But it's derived in restraint from the Quran. If it's unrestrained by the Quran and the hadith and the wahi, then you open the door for the unhatched, underdeveloped minds to speak in ignorance, thinking they are uh, smart, like the modernists of, the day, of today do. So he said, we know Allah bi ayatihi wa makhluqatihi. And here ayat, let's stop at ayat. Ayat are two types. Ayat shar'iyya, that is the revelation. When we say ayat shar'iyya, that's the revelation said to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Revelation by, uh, which is the revealed way, which is uh, the Quran uh, and the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's ayat shar'iyya. That's what we, is, that's what is meant in the verse, huwa alladhi yunazzilu ala abdihi ayatin bayinat. But how is revelation a miracle? How is revelation? He said, this is proof on the existence of Allah. How is revelation? Because revelation is complete, it's total, it's organized, it's consistent. It's non-contradictory, it's infallible. Allah said, وَلَوْ كَانَ مِنْ عِنْدِ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ لَوَجَدُوا فِيهِ اِخْتِلَافًا كَثِيرًا Do they not consider the Qur'an carefully? Had it been from other than Allah, they would surely have found a lot of contradictions in it. لَوَجَدُوا فِيهِ اِخْتِلَافًا كَثِيرًا so that is the revelation, the ayat al sharia is proof of the creator in itself. It's proof of the creator also, and more importantly, in the challenge, which is the miracle, the, when we say the miracle of the Qur'an, it's that challenge. When Allah challenged them all, bring a Qur'an like it, they couldn't, and we're still waiting for it. قُلْ Bikitab, bring a book. Another verse challenging them when they couldn't bring a Quran. Okay, just bring us ten surahs like it. Just ten surahs like it. Then the final challenge, give us a line like it. Three challenges. All those billions and billions and trillions on top of trillions you've been spending all these years to destroy and fight the sense. Save it. Have one of your oriental, uh, orientalists who though they claim they're, they're eloquent and they're artistic in the Arabic, and some of them are very good in, in the Arabic language. You give them that. Or have one of their baby chicks in the Muslim uh, countries who align themselves with them. Bring us an ayah like it. You'll prove our religion wrong and you'll save your trillions instead of fighting Islam. But they couldn't and they won't and they will not. This is proof of how we know my Rabbuk. That's one of the proofs we know how Marab. In addition to the covenant, this is also proof. Not only was it a dare or a double dare, فَإِن لَمْ تَفْعَلُوا وَلَن تَفْعَلُوا A challenge in the highest degree of challenge. The Quran says, we challenge you. And not only is it challenge, but the highest degree of challenge, وَلَن تَفْعَلُوا We challenge you and we tell you, you're not going to do it. It's impossible. That's why he said, bi ayati wa makhluqati. So the first meaning of ayat, when we say ayat, ayat shar'iyya. Another meaning that ayat comes to mean, the second meaning that it could mean, is ayat which is signs. Not in revelation, but in creation. Like for example, it's called ayat kawniya, as opposed to ayat shar'iyya. Like the creation of the human beings, like uh, the creation of the sky, the earth, the moons. That's ayat kawniya. Uh, animals, plants, that's ayat kawniya versus the one I mentioned earlier which is ayat shar'iyya. So when you hear ayat, it could mean both ayat shar'iyya or ayat kawniya. It depends on the context it's in or the intention of the one who says it. It could mean one of them, which is ayat shar'iyya is the revelation. Ayat kawniya is the signs of creation like the earth, the, the, the night, the day, the animals, the plants. So the next issue, now the author says, بِآيَاتِ وَمَخْلُقَاتِ Why did he mention ayat and then makhluqat? He said signs and then he mentioned creation. Had he said ayat, it would include, by both definitions we just mentioned, creation. As we stated. Why did he mention and add ayat and then add the word creation? What I'm saying, and I want you to get this. Had he said ayatihi alone, as we defined it, it would have meant, possibly meant, 
شرعية إنكونية which is revelation and other signs of Allah's creations. Why did he say ayat then follow it by creation? He could have said signs and that's it. Ayat and that's it, period there. But he said makhluqat. The answer to that, it depends on uh, the definition of ayat that he intended. We don't know what he intended when he said ayat. So let's take the scenarios one by one. He could have intended, the first scenario, he could have intended the uh, kawniya, uh, and Sharia, both of them together. Now, if that's his intention, why did he add makhluqati then? Creation after that. That in Arabic is like mentioning something particular after something general to give importance to that specific or particular. That in Arabic is called عطف الخاص على العام على سبيل الاهتمام بالخاص. عطف الخاص على العام على سبيل الاهتمام بالخاص. For those of you who memorize uh, the Ajrumiya, وذكر خاص بعد ذي عموم منبها بفضله المحتوم mentioning something particular after that which is general to give importance to the specific or particular. That's number one. That's number one. And that would be the answer to why he uh, mentioned creation, if he meant kawni and shari'iyah by ayat. Okay, let's go to the second, number two, the scenario. He may have intended to mean the word ayat only the, the shari'i definition alone, uh, meaning the revelation. So if he meant only the revelation, then he meant creation. Then, then he said creation because he needed to add that. So he followed it by creation, to encompass and include everything other than revelation. That's if he meant the shari meaning of ayat. Meaning, what he meant by signs ayat. When he said by ayat, signs, we're assuming in the second scenario, he refer, he, he's referring to the signs of revelation in particular. So then he said creation as an addition which is totally different from the first one. So the first one, ayat, he meant, he meant right now, ayat, which is revelation. So he added on creation to add all the other creation. Ayat would mean revelation only in this scenario. So makhluqat would mean everything outside of the revelation, which is the heaven, the earth, the night, the day, me, you, the moon, and everything else. The third scenario, he may have meant and intended by ayat the kawniya, the kawni definition alone. The signs in the creation. It's what is called in Arabic atf tafsir if he meant that. Combining between two things of the same. Combining between two things of the same. Meaning, with ayat he meant in this scenario the creation, the kawniya. So then why did he say makhluqat, which means the same thing. They're both the same. Why did he mean, say two words to mean the same thing? In Arabic, that's proper. And there's example of it in the Quran. Millat Ibrahim Hanifa. Millat Ibrahim is Hanifa. Hanifa is Millat Ibrahim. It's combining between two th things that are same to stress a point. Does everyone understand? Anyone not understand? Uh, what you need to understand is the ayah uh, is defined as shari in kawni. Shari in kawni has two meanings. Then, what did the author mean when he said ayat? Did he mean both kawni and shari, which is, was the first scenario I mentioned? Or did he mean shari alone with the ayat when he mentioned ayat? Or did he mean the kawni alone when he meant ayat? And we gave the breakdown for every one of those three scenarios. He's not here for us, the author's not here for us to ask. And even if he was, and we knew precisely what he meant. Knowing all three scenarios and all three definitions of ayat and why he would add creation to each one uh, combining ayati and makhluqati, why he would add makhluqati to ayati, and we gave the three scenarios of ayat, it would give us a broader understanding. And in the future, we'll make uh, books that you read in the future of the ulama easier. It's... it's uh, it's, it's matters like these that distinguish between one who has superficial knowledge and one who is a talib ilm.
in a strong talib ilm. And that's what we, inshallah, plan to raise. 